untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Okay, pack one, pick one. Our uh, rare three blind mice. Pretty decent, can make multiple tokens. Eventually pump the team. Good for a celebration deck especially. We also have a tough cookie, great in a food deck, but just powerful individually, making some of our artifacts into 4-4s. Four There's a takedown as removal spell in green, cooped up, removal in white. Torch the tower also solid in red. So a lot of ways we can go, but let's try the rare, even though I'm not counting on cooped up wheeling. Next up, there's Beseech the Mirror. Don't think this one's great and limited, even with Bargain. Still pretty tricky to cast. I do like Taken by Nightmares as a 4-mana Insta Speed removal spell. And then we might end up in the Black-White Sacrifice deck instead. That's looking to sacrifice some enchantments to Bargain. The Guide could also be good with 3 Blind Mice. Shatter the Oath. Could also be good to generate that enchantment roll token. Okay, the princess takes flight is excellent if we can sacrifice it before we give back the exiled creature. So definitely wants to be paired with bargain. There's the numbing depths, which is also a nice payoff for the blue white tap deck. And a Hopeless Nightmare, good also in the Black-White Sacrifice deck. So a couple of options. But uh, yeah, let's go with the Princess. See if we can make this Bargain deck work. And uh, Courier is also going to be, or Courtier, is also going to be quite good in that deck if we can sacrifice the Cursed Roll or replace it some other way. Light Blades as cheap removals, also decent. And then there's a 5-mana Fairy, which is also quite strong. So a lot of options. But uh, yeah, let's take the cheaper card that works with our Sacrifice theme. Just need to pick up some Bargain cards, and there's one of them. Rowan's Grim Search gives us some card advantage. Some other solid playables, Knightly Valor. Can also trigger Celebration all by itself. There's the Sweet Tooth Witch. Besotted Knight, so a couple playables, but Grim Surge seems to fit our deck nicely. And next up, don't mind Prophetic Prism as something else we can sacrifice to bargain. It replaces itself. Can also fix our colors if we intend to splash. Not a fan of Rat Outs, but Conceited Witch could be fine. The uh, Financier, unlikely to generate a ton of value, but it could also make treasures for Bargain. Okay, next up, take a Nightmare. Fits our Sacrifice theme. And yeah, how about Ashiox Reaper can also draw us a few extra cards. As long as we can sacrifice those enchantments. Let's see, Stab Wound, does that synergize with Ashok's Reaper? It does. Yeah, I'll take it. If we can kill a creature instantly, we get to draw a card, perhaps. And if not, we can maybe drain the opponent to death. Pretty late takedown on the wheel here. So green seems somewhat open. Eh, I don't think Tutelage is likely to make the final cut, since it can lose us a lot of life but we could technically sacrifice it to bargain as well. Um, plunge into winter is a fine cantrip, so I'll just take that. Another nightmare. Looks good. So we've got the bargain enablers. Could use a few more payoff cards with the actual bargain mechanic. Pack two. Good removal in Grasp of Fate. Nothing else that I'm too interested in. The Butcher, more for a, a rat sacrifice deck. 
And then the encounter is also good in green, but that's not what we're currently trying to do. Okay, Shepherd's pretty nice for a black-white deck when we can cast both halves. Also a fan of Hopeful Vigil as something cheap that can be sacrificed and provide more value. Acolyte would also be playable for 3 mana, just in white, draws a card when it enters. But uh, could use some more 2 drops. And this can randomly kind of own an opponent that has a bunch of 1 1 rats in play. And next up, could take another removal spell, Stroke of Midnight, does give the opponent a 1 1 token in return. But sometimes that's a worthwhile compromise. Could also take. Charay, since we have Prophetic Prism to maybe splash a bit of blue. Synergizes with Plunge into Winter, although we haven't picked up a lot of other tap effects. So let's just keep it simple. Okay, now we can take the Flyer. Feed the Cauldron would also be an option. Can maybe leave behind a food token to enable Bargain. And I wouldn't mind another Prophetic Prism, but can maybe wheel it. I don't think we'll be gaining three very often for Griffin Airy. So nothing too exciting in this pack for us. Maybe a Sweet Tooth Witch leaves behind a food token. Okay, the Celebrant could be good with cards like Prophetic Prism. And uh, can also potentially return, let's say, the Cursed Roll token and still let us cry to. So there's a couple synergies in our deck. Ariad's Whisper could also be fine, make the opponent discard two cards and get a Wicked Roll. Can maybe replace the Cursed Roll, turn this into a 4-4 lifelink. Yeah, not sure which one I prefer here. I guess we have a lot of 3-drops already. Alright, fine, let's take the Whisper. Even the Collector's Vault could be reasonable in a deck like this. Okay, take another Flyer. There was the 1 mana Pump Spell with Bargain as well, worth considering. Although I'm looking to play more like a Control deck. Take another Flyer, even though Savior could work well in this deck if we can enable it turn after turn. But uh, we do need some finishers, and flying is a great way to close out the game. Nothing in this pack. Don't think I'm playing a Crystal Grotto. Okay, we wield Acolytes, which I'm fine with. And do we want a Sugar Rush? Could be good alongside some of the tokens from our three blind mice, for instance. Probably don't need another five drop. And we wield Prophetic Prism. Alright, so heading into the last pack, mostly looking for some payoffs with Bargain, basically. And um, this is not quite what we needed. A Tale for the Ages. We do have a few ways to enchant our creatures, but I don't think it's going to be reliable enough to make the deck. Uh, do have a Grim Search, but maybe I hope to wheel it and just take another Princess Takes Flight. Even a Hopeful Vigil, so... Yeah, we might have enough bargain kind of uh, enablers that I should just take the payoff. I do have a lot of 3-drops already, but this is pretty awesome if we get it going. can also just exile an opposing token for good. Would get better if we have some more 2-mana creatures to pump up with a second chapter, admittedly. So that's a reason to take a Hopeful Vigil here. And then if I either wheel Grim Search or Princess Takes Flight, I'll be happy. Ooh, nice uh, black-white dual land. Definitely the pick here. Ooh, 
Ildos Crown of Winter, also very strong even without any tap synergies. Another 3-drop here would also be acceptable. But I think Crown is just too good to pass up. Shatter the Oath also would be quite tempting. Glass Caskets. Don't mind if I do. More good removal. Unassuming Sage has a little bit of synergy with Bargain, but is kind of overpriced. What does this pack offer? I've got a Light Blades, which does have Bargain. Could take a Knight of Doves, which of course is quite fitting in this deck if we can enable it. Although we might be a bit light on Bargain cards to consistently put our enchantments in the graveyard. So it's possible I should just take the Light Blades. In terms of removal, we've got a Taken by Nightmares. We've got Glass Caskets. Grasp of Fates. Stab Wound, sort of. Crown of Winter we could also count as removal. And then the Princess takes flight if we can sacrifice it. Stroke of Midnight. So we're definitely doing okay in terms of removal. So maybe I should just take another payoff card, which is pretty good if it sticks around. But now I pretty much have to take every bargain card we come across. Nothing here that I want. Might play Visitor, but I doubt it. And no bargain cards here, could take Celebrant. Nothing here for us either. Some nice multicolor options, just not in our colors. All right, we wield Princess and Grim Search. I think I gotta take Grim Search. I've got a lot of ways to enable it. I guess uh, Reindeer isn't bad in this deck, but. Not sure if uh, I'll have room for it. Okay, another life linker is nice. Ooh, wields light blades and prophetic prism, both actually good enough to make the deck. But I'll take a light blades now. Now some cards specifically require an enchantment going to the graveyard, so then sacrificing prism to bargain is not good enough. Cards like the Knight of Doves, for instance, specifically needs an enchantment to go to the graveyard. So I don't think we need double Sweet Tooth Witch in this deck. Not really going for the food synergies. I like all of my two drops. Sugar Rush is maybe cuttable. Although it's nice to have a combo trick. Plunge into winter, can take it or leave it. And then three drops look fine. Stab wound I can also take or leave, although it does have a few synergies across the deck. And then reindeer I probably don't need. Start by cutting those. So Need to make three more cuts. Could this be a 16 land deck? Our curve isn't incredibly high. I've got a few cantrips, double grim search to dig deeper. I've got a bit of mana fixing. I mostly just need to get to three mana and then I'll be fine. Yeah, I could see cutting a swamp here. Two more cuts. So how many actual enchantments do we have for ways to generate enchantments? So there's a two Nightmares, Vigil. We've got Princess Takes Flight, which will naturally end up in the graveyard. Same with the three Blind Mice. Grasp of Fate unlikely to end up in the graveyard. Stab Wounds will probably get there. And then we've got additional rolls uh, so this can also generate a roll, and then 
that can potentially enable some of those synergies. Same with Ariad's Whisper, so we do actually have quite a few ways to generate those roll tokens. Possible I don't need Stroke of Midnight, which does give the opponent a 1-1 in return. For large creatures, we've got Taken by Nightmares, Grasp of Fate, Princess Takes Flight if we can sacrifice it. So we seem to have a couple answers. Crown can also tap down larger creatures. So that one can go. And then one more cut. Could let go of a Prophetic Prism. I don't have a ton of 2-drops, so it's just nice to have a proactive play on turn 2 that draws a card, fixes my mana, enables Bargain. I think I'll keep the Prism. And then I can also maybe sacrifice Prism to an early Bargain card. And then later have cards like Reaper to go with our enchantments. Could cut one of the flyers. Three might be one too many. Although this is one of our main win conditions still. Other win conditions include our uh, Knight of Doves making some 1 1 flyers. I guess outgrinding the opponent could also be a win condition if we draw enough cards. Although it's not like we have that many card draw effects. Yeah, maybe one of them can go still. Especially if we're running 16 land. Okay, and there we go. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Turn 1 Nightmare, turn 2 Prism. Hopefully get some bargain cards for Knight of Doves. We can see the glass casket on the left-hand side of the playmat. The reindeer top left, the ginger cabin top right, and the beanstalk bottom right. Okay, prism the play here. Got our land for Knight of Doves. It's not going to be easy to enable it this game. But we can always sacrifice Nightmare manually for 3 mana. This is something we want to put in a casket. Could take a bit of a gamble with Prophetic Prism first, hope to draw land, and then we can still casket. But if we miss, it's pretty bad if they get access to, to extra mana next turn already. But maybe I just need to ensure that I hit my land drops here. Yeah, you know what. Always had it. Would love to find a bargain card to sank the cursed roll. Would also make a dove. And there we go. There's our bargain. So we can just play courtier and pass. And then next turn Grim Search seems acceptable. Could also play Grim Search, sanking nightmare, make a dove. But then I don't really have a great follow up. But I'm just playing a 3-3 flyer. Not waiting to destroy our creatures, so possible they're not playing white. Definitely don't want this getting countered. Stop gap bounces knight. Can go knight into shepherd, pump, court here. And then next turn, and get the birds going. Okay, Archive Dragons, potentially a problem. Can still attack into it with Light Blades. So I'm kind of hoping they attack with a clique. Perfect. If they take it, I can just Grim Search. And 
and Princess Takes Flight grasp are both excellent. Although I wouldn't be able to exile the Archive Dragon now. Bone falls to 8. Might still be worth it to Princess Takes Flight on the Clique. And then next turn grasp the Archive Dragon. And then we'll get to pump one of our creatures with Chapter 2. Yeah, this uh, is coming along nicely. Ooh, Twining Twins. At least without the adventure first. Still 4-4. Four, four. And our opponent could. I guess it didn't have anything to sacrifice. Okay, so. What takes flight? Probably the 3-3. Three, three. And then we can clear Archive Dragon, get a nice attack in. It is Ward 2 on this, Ward 1 on this. So, don't quite have the mana to remove two of them. But that's fine. And that's probably it. Bonus at 3. They will get their Princess Takes Flight's target back, since we weren't able to sacrifice it in time. So that's the only drawback, but we will also get a 1-1 bird in return. Okay, that's uh, scary. Opponent back up to 6. About to get their flyer back. So, not loving my position anymore. Now I can try and force something with my flyers. And I can add another one to the board. So maybe it's not as bad here. If I play this, I won't have the mana to get around ward. Probably just attack with one bird. If they block with clique, what happens? That would be kind of awkward. So maybe I just play Clothier and pass. If we can find another removal spell for their clique, then we're fine. Oh no, opponent destroys my enchantments. Gets back Archive Dragon. How did this game get out of hand so quickly? Opponent just uh, getting back creature after creature. At least they're at 6. So we got them kind of low. Turn my 3-4 into a 1-1. One, one. Yep. Can't sacrifice that enchantment, unfortunately, to the Light Blades. Okay. If Glutton attacks, I might have to just take it out, but that's going to hang back. Could triple block the Twining Twins. Or I can just take it out next turn. But then the Archive Dragon might also attack. I'll just take it for now. Okay, that draws a card. Could also get something back with Prophetic Prism fixing for green. And Grasp of Fate wouldn't be a bad draw. So Grasp of Fate still doesn't get around Ward. So maybe we actually Princess takes flight again, even though it's a little risky. We'll be able to probably sacrifice it to the Light Blades in time. And then I can just maybe exile the clique. And then next turn, pump this one, attack all out, removing Archive Dragon with uh, Light Blades, and then we would almost get there. Because yeah, I can't pay the ward for either one of their bigger flyers. The only sad news is that they would prevent me from gaining life if I kill the creature before damage, but I guess what we can do is go to the end of combat step to finish off Archive Dragon if it blocks a 5-5 Courtier. Because there is a very small phase after 
damage, but before second main phase, where we can still potentially take out creatures that are declared as blockers. So I think that's going to be the plan here. That way I get to gain 5 of the court here. Bone plays Vanguard. Stab wounds could also be useful. So definitely need to go full control to not mess this up. And then I don't think we can stab wounds, at least not yet. Can maybe finish off the opponent with a stab wound, which would be pretty funny. So all flyers attack. Opponent goes for the obvious blocks. And then could also kill the Twining Twins, since this one's not actually dying. I guess that makes more sense. And it's only Ward 1. So with Bargain, so we can sacrifice... Princess takes flight before they get their creature back. Make another 1-1. One, one. Pay for ward. Opponent takes 3. We gain 5. Can stab wound to finish off Archive Dragon, but I can stab wound to drain the opponent for 2 here. Shrinking down. What's more relevant? I guess Vanguard. Bones at one. And hopefully that's good enough. Can chum block Glutton with everyone here since we just need stab wounds to stick around to win the game. Opponent has to go for the all out attack. So we'll oblige. This seems fine. And that's not gonna save them. Zoom Seeker, get back. Instant or Sorcery. Stop Gap. They can't sack the stab wounds. Vanguard they cannot sacrifice either. And does this bounce any creature? It does, so they could bounce their own Vanguard if they wanted to. But that's uh, not gonna do it. Alright, let's just get in with one bird. Could have also let them untap with a stamp wound, but this seems fine. Definitely a close one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand, hoping we can find a third land. We can. So do I run out a 2 mana 2-2? Two, two. Against blue rats. I don't expect them to have a ton of 1 toughness, although they could have the 2-1 Fairy for 3. Which I could maybe kill with the Adventure, but... Let's just uh, get on the board here. If they play the Fairy, I can stab wound it if I want. Bone's gonna bounce it, fair enough. Now I'll probably go for Lifelinker. Could also draw with Acolyte. The plan is to probably turn 5, play or Flyer, replace the Cursed Roll with Royal Roll and have a 4-4 left over. Don't have to go for it now, I could just draw a card first. Since I also need to find a 5th land. So we definitely have options. Opponent fetches. And another bounce spell. Well, bouncing my 3-drop that drew me a card doesn't feel too bad. Probably want a double 2-drop now, just so I don't have to discard to hand size. If I just play this, I guess I'm still good, but I don't have a 5th land lined up 
for my flyer anyway. So let's just double spell. I do miss out on the plus two plus two somewhat. But uh, nice to get on the board when we can back it up with a few removal spells. Ooh, nice. Decadent Dragon. That's not going to survive. How do we want to answer it? Probably go with a more expensive removal option here, which is taken by Nightmares. And then we get to scry a bunch. I'll keep one Grim Surge. Do we want to keep both? I want to sacrifice a bunch of stuff here. Vigil can sacrifice the Cursed Roll. But I also want to hit my land drops. Although Grim Surge helps me hit my land drops. Is this too greedy? I get to dig pretty deep. Yeah, I think it's greedy. Because I'm going to want to keep a land with the first Grim Surge. So then I can only keep Grim Surge land and have to get rid of two other cards. Which might be great. And there's a 2-1 we were talking about earlier. Stab wound is an option. Our opponent's gonna turn Shepherd into a 1 1. And then next turn they can start deploying Gatekeeper. So we have options. Just playing our Flyer, replacing this with a Royal Roll, makes this a 3 3 attack all out. That's pretty good. And then we can just remove Gatekeeper with. Grasp of Fates, and then keep up the pressure with our Flyer. And this uses up all my mana. Oh, never mind, I guess, yeah. Scratch that, so Roll Token doesn't replace the opponent's Roll Token. It's only if it's our own Roll Token. Still gotta get used to that interaction. Either way, can offer the trade here. So I won't be able to sacrifice the opponent's cursed roll since I'm not the one controlling it. Opponent offers a trade. So now I probably want to Grim Search, Sacking Vigil, I'll look for an extra land, and I can keep double white untapped so any land will cast Grasp of Fate. All right, I'll take two lanes. Although now I probably want to keep the crown and a land. So just grasp gatekeeper. And the next one we can tap down. Or we can uh, deploy some more three drops attack with a flyer. Certainly have options. Stamp wound could also be a fun win condition. Let's say we... Yeah, three blind mice feels a bit slow right now. So maybe acolyte draw. If I draw a land I can still go crown tap down. Although I guess never mind. Crown is free in my turn. So either way I can 3-drop plus crown. Well, this uh, seems a better solution. Our deck has a lot of removal. Intruder alarm? Oh no. Guess I'll just have to play a creature. And that's good enough. All right. Sweet. We're on the play with a fine hand. Can sack the cursed roll to the light blades, perhaps. Ooh, turn one Utopia Sprawl, that's scary. Mm, 
they can discard. We could draw next turn with Acolyte if we're not in a hurry to play our Cursed Noble. Okay, Prowler. I'm also not in a hurry to exile with Take Flight. So maybe just draw for now. Alright, Garrick's Uprising to Grand Trample. Four mana. We can Vigil plus Light Blades. Although I don't want to really attack into the Prowler necessarily. So maybe play the Courtier. And then I can offer the trade for Acolytes. Removing the Cursed Roll at instant speed can also be kind of a trick in and of itself. Although opponent had other plans. Okay, make them discard two here seems pretty effective. Two nice adventure creatures. Hit for three. With a land they can play Hunter, which we can exile. Although it'll draw them a card with Uprising. Okay. So now can play Vigil. Princess takes flight. Probably exiling Scavenger is fine. Now I guess the Prowler will grow from Hunter being cast with an extra land here. But removing Scavenger lets me attack for three. We're ahead in the race. And then I can put Light Blades to use. And there's a lot of things we can sacrifice to the Light Blades, but probably Princess Takes Flights is the priority, so they don't get the Wolf back. Okay, Fortress to draw. So, probably flying the Acolytes. And then what I could do is attack with a Knight on the ground if they block Light Blades for 5 damage. Or I guess it just destroys. Sacking Princess takes flight. Could also just Grasp of Fates, but then I might not be able to use Light Blades if they don't attack with the Prowler next turn. So let's give this a shot. At 10 life, it's sketchy for them to just take it, but I guess they do have some food tokens they could sacrifice next turn. Alright, that's what we wanted. And then I can still sacrifice one of these other enchantments just to scry to. This will drain them for two just by attacking. So, yeah, they're pretty close to dead. Oof. Okay, I take it back. Prowler, six power, so that's scary. And they attack. If only this were an instance, we could have uh, killed them here. So had I gone for Grasp of Fate last turn and then keep up the Light Blades, it might have worked out better. Either way, we got a Scry. They're both virtually the same, don't think it matters. Bottom bottom. Unless I want a land to play Grasp and still have mana to activate, but we would be short. So bottom bottom it is. And then take six since it tramples. Just a land. Okay, could be in trouble now. Exile Glutton, and then probably hang back with both. Although if they have another Curve Topper, 
we're just gonna be pretty dead. If I activate Fortress, attack, block, take essentially a five here. Not quite enough. The Knight can attack with Vigilance. All right, let's see what they've got. Oof, another glutton, back to back. Yeah, that's uh, not good for us. This Prowler, all the way up to an 8-7. So it scales nicely. I think I'm at a loss here. I don't think we have any realistic outs. I guess Fortress doesn't even block. So we might as well scry. Yeah. I think had we played this slightly differently, just go for a grasp on the giants, then we might have been okay. So casket is an answer to the prowler, but it's gonna be too late. So yeah, I think this is just game over, sadly. Can't think of any top decks that save me. Bones at eight, Shepherd, not quite. All right, GG's. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. I'll have to wait and see if I draw third land. If I don't, probably go for Prism to get the three blind mice going as soon as possible. If I do draw land, we can play Vigil first. Turn one Sprite. And no land, so let's go for Prism. And there's our land. Okay. So three blind mice for starters. Knight of Dwarfs can also trigger off three blind mice going to the graveyard once it reaches a final chapter. Can double spell Nightmare and Vigil. Grim Search also can potentially enable Knight if we sack an enchantment. What we don't have is removal. And our opponent's attacking us for two in the air with a flyer. Okay. So next up, probably Nightmare plus Knight of Doves. If this baits out a Spell Stutter, I'm happy. So I think the sequencing is fine, but they don't seem to have anything. on discarding the reindeer. So copy our mice. And we've got a few options here. Probably want to just Grim Search, leaving up white mana, sacking a nightmare. Could also sack the three blind mice before it reaches final chapter, but I think that'll set up a powerful attack. So we first get to scry, and then we'll get to look at the top four cards, basically. Another Grim Search isn't bad. I'll take a land, but we'll likely find more lands. Alright, so... A wealth of options. Stab Wound can answer their flyer. Princess Takes Flight can also answer their flyer. Would be nice to go lands this turn to play Vigil. And then I'll have 5 mana for my Clothier. 
So maybe then I do go Swamp plus Stab Wound. Stab Wound also triggers my Knight of Doves if it goes to the graveyard. And then I get to play Hopeful Vigil. Get as much in play as possible for the final chapter. And then we could also use the Adventure next turn potentially to shrink opposing creatures down. So potentially giving up a bit of long-term value for the more explosive turn coming up. Another aura. Opponent hangs back with Basalted Knight. And plays another one. So make a Dove. And uh, yeah, there's no limit to how many we can make in one turn. So what are we thinking? Could shrink their team down. Stab Wound finishes off the 2-2 two -two Knight now. They would still have a 3-3 three -three left over. And then I attack all out. They can eat a 2-2, two -two, take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That seems decent. And then I can still cast a Shepherd later to pump something up, like my Flyer. Yeah, let's try that. Keeping Stab Wound on an opposing creature, of course, can also be a valid strategy. Their opponent's at 6. Fortress can also deal the last points next turn. If we draw land, we can activate, attack, and play Shepherd. I'll take it. Archon, nice. Enchanted creatures are 4 4 flyers, but with their opponent at 6, if I just animate Fortress and attack, they should still be dead. There's no lifelink. I guess they could have the 1 mana trick here, which would be bad. But they don't. All right, sweet. So yeah, we'll uh, give this a shot. They've got their blue mana now. We've got Shepherd to punish all those one toughness creatures. Celebrant discarded. And a spreading sea is nice. So they're gonna mana screw us now. Well, I won't be able to use the black adventure, so I guess I'll just cast this for two mana as a 2 2. Another spreading seas would be funny. Alright, so Acolyte can draw. They may counter it. Nice out. Ooh, Hilda. Hilda is scary. So I can attack into it with a plan of using the Light Blades with Bargain. Could also just Princess Takes Flights, exile it. Playing Reaper first would be nice to uh, kind of set up our Bargain synergies. But that's going to be tricky. But giving them one turn of Hilda might be one turn too many. So, yeah, this is tricky. I think we try and set up the Light Blades. Bone probably takes it. And then I'll maybe Princess takes flight. It's just going to be awkward if I can't sacrifice the uh, flight to bargain. So maybe I do have to just play a Reaper here. And that can draw off maybe a stab wound, killing something small. And there's something small. Ooh, Curiosity, very nice on Ginger Brute. And a House Mouse to pump it up. So 
So I can block Ginger Brute, take five. But we can finish off the Brute. And this uh, Shepherd would have been awesome had we been able to keep it for now. And what's our plan? Stab wound the Ginger Brutes, draws with Reaper, and then keep up Light Blades, I suppose. Okay. Would love for Hilda to attack so we can take it out while drawing with Reaper. And by having our creatures tapped, Hilda also becomes less effective. Opponent really likes Ginger Brute. Hope this resolves. Get to scry to and then draw. And a spell stutter was their last card. Okay. Double Grim Search. It is good alongside Princess Takes Flight to get rid of a creature permanently. But I wouldn't be able to double spell next turn. I guess it's good enough still. Keep one. Okay, a lifelinker can help out too. I think it's still Princess Exile Hilda. Then our opponent's got us on a three turn clock with her evasive creatures, but Courtier can help. And our opponent's also taking five, next turn a bunch more in the air. So then that way we also just threaten lethal with this. And we can sack it to the Grim Search so they don't get Hilda back. So they need a good top deck. They could always sacrifice Ginger Brute to gain three, which is what they'll do with the second one, maybe. So it is actually still going to be close with Ginger Brutes growing up to a 4 4 next turn. Don't want to lose two life to the Grim Search if I can avoid it. But I am forcing the opponent to trump with Ginger Brute and sack it, although they didn't play the House Mouse. So that's interesting. So they must have something else in hand then that they want to cast, maybe a counter spell. If it's a three mana counter, then they won't have the mana to gain life. So maybe step one is play the Life Linker. Next turn, then I could replace the roll with the Clothier, or I could just play Clothier now and have another evasive attacker. But this plays around Spell Stutter better. They could still have the three mana counter with Bargain sacrificing the young hero roll, but nope. So now the concern possibly is that they would get back Hilda. It does seem like they were keeping up some sort of counter, but we'll see. Can always Grim Surge before reaching the final chapter, but the life loss might be too scary. So it does seem like they have a counter in hand. Those Ginger Brutes attack. It does not. All right, so that does potentially afford me to Grim Surge Princess Takes Flight. I would go to four. But as long as Courtier attacks, that's fine. Could also sank the Cursed Roll to have a bigger life linker, but then our opponent gets Hilda back, so that seems bad. But of course this is likely just getting countered. A Reaper also draws. Okay, that worked. Is this a bounce spell on the court here? Found crown and the land. Which is the only relevant interaction here. So 
I can play Crown, tap one of the opponent's creatures down. Because it's my turn. They have a response. Nice out, sacking the enchantment. So now at least I can attack with a courtier to make sure I gain one so I'm not dead to Ginger Brute picking up an extra counter. And then can I attack with Shepherd? They just block it with Ginger Brute. So I don't think that makes too much sense. Although I guess, let's see. If I attack with everyone, Mouse chumps Reaper, Ginger Brute eats Shepherd, they only take one. But then Mouse is dead. And of course, if they sank Ginger Brute to gain life, that solves my problem. So, what's the reason not to attack all out? They could also trade, trade, take one, which I'm happy with. Yeah, this seems fine. Could still be that to an extra pump spell. Opponent passes, and we should have it here. Can play Big Flyer. Replace the roll. Which also draws with Reaper, so definitely seeing the synergies. And can just drain them to death with Nightmare. GG's. Close one here. All the way down to potentially one life. Okay, we're on the draw with a uh, keepable hand. Turn one Nightmare. Definitely been impressed by this card, especially in this archetype, of course. Crown is a bomb. Opponent on red black. Turn to Prism, so looks like a grindier deck. Against red black, I'm tempted to keep the minus one, minus one to answer a bunch of rats. So I'll play it slow. Can just play an Acolyte next turn and draw a card. Alright, speaking of rats. I think I should just get my instant value before this gets out of hand. There's another one, although they could have sacrificed a rat token to draw. Now, could get the crown going, tap something down in the opponent's turn. Don't mind that. And then next turn we can play creatures to activate crown or double spell if we want. Just want to mitigate the damage we take. Okay, that's what we'll be tapping down now. And uh, I would like to play the Knights before sacking Nightmare to Grim Search. So I could do that now. Although they could easily remove it before I get a chance to sacrifice anything. So maybe I do just play Acolyte first. Even though it doesn't block Butcher as well. Caskets, okay. That's not bad, although I'm still favoring Hilda's crown on the screen puff. And see if we can bait out some removal. Yeah, I'm fine with the trick here. And Daredevil, sure. Still trade. So we have to do some damage control few ways we can approach it. So it's going to be caskets, 3 drop plus activate crown, and then yeah, Knight of Doves is tempting to set up our Grim Surge, but I could just play the Courtier to start getting some life back. 
and then Grim Search on Courtier might be enough, or we can also play Knight next turn, which would be the best case scenario. And Exile Daredevil. Crown is putting in work. Okay, we've got the lane, so we can go knights, grim search, and then still activate crown. Alright, that's too bad. So don't get to gain any life. I'll wait to sacrifice hopeless nightmare to the grim search now. And I can main phase it or do it in the opponent's turn. This will trigger either way, so yeah, I guess we'll pass. That way we'll have more information on what to keep with the Grim Surge, depending on what the opponent does. Okay, that's a good one. So if their creatures die, they get a rant, and they can give rants a death touch. So that includes the Butcher. So wouldn't be blocking it. Okay. Um, Nightmare to get their last card isn't bad. Same with a flyer. So I'll keep both. And then anything better. Mm, light blades is tempting, but I can double spell nightmare clothier and still activate crown. So I kind of prefer that sequencing here. Stab wounds doesn't kill any creatures, but it's pretty effective on a two three. So we'll start here. They had a nice one, another nightmares. So. Clothier, counter on the bird. That can attack. Keep tapping down Scream Puff. Easy to miss uh, activating Hilda's crown if you're not careful. And then do I want to trade my flyer? Not really. Okay, so we're in the driver's seat. Stab wound on probably Tottentons itself over the Butcher, although this isn't a rat, so it can give itself death touch. So shrinking this down will make it so they don't have any good attacks left. Good pump, Knight of the Doves. And then take two from Tottentons, or we can pump one of our flyers. And just get in with those. And then I'll play out the land, but I will be using the crown here. And then we should be able to cross the finish line with our flyers. Can tap another blocker with crown in my turn. Back for seconds. Okay, getting back. Voracious vermin, but it's not going to be enough here. Sweet. Attack with our flyers, and that's game. Awesome. So yeah, this game felt like we were in control from start to finish, and of course, Hilda's crown a big part of that. Sweet. So we got uh, seven wins in the end, only dropping one game in the process. So yeah, Black-White Sacrifice with a couple bargain synergies is a solid archetype in Wilds of Eldraine Limited. 
but uh, as you can see there's a lot of viable archetypes out there doesn't feel like any two color pair is completely unplayable from what i've seen so far so yeah definitely looking forward to more wilds of eldraine limited in the future so we'll have to see how these uh, videos perform on youtube if they get a lot of traction then uh, i'll be more incentivized to make more of them but for now that's going to do it for today's gameplay I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.